everybody, welcome back to the Center for Offer Research Shenanigans of Science Technical Division. And I have decided to build a comp rig out of uh, some stuff I already had and some stuff I didn't. So my Enjora Plus 4 axles finally came in. These are really nice. These are the same ones that I put on the Olympus build that you saw earlier. And I've gone ahead and put an Emax on there with a brass Samix um, servo mount. Also, I'm in the process of, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the Little Guy Trail Kings. They're not Trail Kings, I hate those. But I love the Little Guy Swamp Kings. They're fantastic. And I have them on uh, SSD wheels that have these four screws on the back. And that's good and bad because they're super easy to put together. However, if you want to use brass weights, you have to notch them out because if you don't, they will never seat properly in and that screw has to seat right there into the uh that same it, it basically i notched it for the the screws on the back side of the rim so that's the only unfortunate thing about those other than that they're super easy to put together i'm going to run these swamp kings this is my first build that is not going to have uh um, foams in the in the tires but they are sealed rims, so they're still pneumatic, and I wanted to have something. So this is truly an aired down tire, and I like that a lot. So um, my friends Lance and Brian came over and gave me this awesome RB1 chassis that I just dropped right in front of you. And I'm going to go ahead and build this one with Gladiator links, and I've got some metal ones. I can't remember the brand, but it doesn't matter. Um, and I'm going to get the motor out of the, uh, E1 Super here, temporarily, until I can get another one. I've got some stuff on order, and I'll rebuild it later. Um, I don't need the axles or the links or really anything except for that motor, and I'm going to use, uh, PN90 with the PN, um, transmission gearing and all that so essentially all I really need to pull out of here is the motor and uh, might not even need to do that but that's what's going to happen um, I also need the shocks from it so uh, with the gladiator links I have to use double barrels on the back of that so normally I only run one double barrel on the right rear that gives it more droop for when it has to go over obstacles but does not hurt it on climb performance so this one will be converted to double barrel because it needs to with the um the gladiator links just just to be able to physically reach back to the wheel and this is my no compromise build it's got a even a metal servo horn on that that's pretty nice and that is courtesy of mike he gave me that servo horn with the Olympus build, and that was pretty nice of him. I appreciate that. Also, another note on these weights here. Okay, um, when I put them on, they don't go fully on. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm not getting the full amount of threads that I should as if I was going to put on one of the stock pieces that seats in a lot deeper. and. The reason for that is the inner dish on this, see how it's kind of cupped? Well, sadly, it physically contacts the knuckle. And what I'm doing here is I'm grinding it against that knuckle, and that's going to leave marks where it's rubbing. I don't know if you can see that in the picture here, but there there if I flip it around there and there so rather than reduce the weight of the brass piece here and file out the back which I could do I mean it left a ring inside there that I can see but I would end up having to take quite a bit of material out or I can just take my Dremel tool and sort of round out these corners a little bit you never notice it. It won't affect the strength really at all. And I'll get my uh, 
waits to be able to seat fully onto that. So right now they're they're contacting the metal before it fully seats, and that's an unacceptable situation. So I scraped my hand a while back. No big deal. It'll grow back. Um, so I'll do the same thing here. Just put some witness marks on the areas where I need to do a little grinding. And you can see that silver show up there where I scratched the paint off on the corners. But I really wanted to use these weights because they're pretty nice. Um, my SSD wheels do have brass rings in them. So I don't really need them, but I do like the front to be a little heavier than the back. Also, I think eventually I'm going to put the same motor in this that I put into my uh, into uh, Mike's Olympus build. Because that motor is just super sweet. Or, another option is I might go with the uh, lower KV BAM motor because I really like that one too. Um, I have brand loyalty to... Mofo RC because he's been really good to me and uh, just has a lot of quality parts and I appreciate that. So one of those two is going to go into this because I can mount that low and uh, either one of those are real lightweight. So I'll figure out which one, just which one makes the most sense for a uh, packaging standpoint. But until then, I'm going with a bigger, heavier uh, PN Racing PN90 turn. It's cheap and I own it. This is the temporary heart of the new crawler that's going in. I've done a little shaving on it just to flatten the bottom of the skid plate a bit, rounded off the screw or flattened the screw heads a little bit. I can still get my uh, these mofo tools will lock in even if the screw head is uh, rounded down a little bit, or ground down, and uh, that's good. I just basically took it out of the E1 without really taking much apart. I took one of the side panels off to get it out. But I had a uh, skid plate courtesy of Ryan and Lance yesterday that is going to go into the uh, new truck here. And then I'll make a internal body structure for it similar to my other um, RB1. And it's a real clean install that way. And I don't know, maybe I'll leave this motor a little bit more displayed because I can and uh, it'll look cool. I might have to rearrange where the battery goes temporarily, but that's details for later. Um, might have to do a little bit of uh, fitting on that, although it looks like it's going on pretty well. I think of that I could run it forward but it would get into the uh, front links or I could spin it around and that would leave a ton of room in the back here for a battery and that's that's your tremendous amount of room for a battery but I think I'd like to have the weight more centered on this one rather than forward because it's going to already have a great center of gravity with uh, the extended links on it I don't think that I think it'll still crawl in the 56 to 59 range as far as uh, incline goes. So I think if I put it on this way, it'll sit more in the center and I'll still have plenty of room to put a battery to the left of it. So that could actually look pretty cool. I'm going to leave the top of this motor sort of exposed and build the bodywork, the internal bodywork around it. So that's that's actually going to look pretty cool, I think. So might have to do a little bit of trimming to make sure that my rear links are the proper length because uh, it changes the geometry, the output a little bit of the um, shafts on this, on the on the output shafts of the transmission so there's no way around it if I have to shave off about three millimeters from the uh, rear drive shaft I can do that the front one still has enough length on it that it'll have no problem locking in properly I had to do quite a bit of grinding on that to make this fit properly but I put some black sharpie on it so you can't tell 
and I still get full uh, thread penetration on that so that should be a good fix for it. That 124 parts don't always want to play nice because they're made by different manufacturers and uh, these took a little bit of modification to be able to use these brass um, end pieces. But I, I did enough grinding on this thing that I have the clearance I need with no rubbing and that's going to set this one apart because um, these have brass rings inside of them and this is brass. This is aluminum axle and I think this is going to be a killer truck once it's done. So looking forward to the rest of the build. You know when you build one of these cars you think it's just going to go right together and I could have probably just slapped it together in under an hour and it would have been sloppy looking and things wouldn't have fit right because different manufacturers have different tolerances and uh, when you go to mix them and match them you have to machine them a little bit make allowances so they all fit together also when I build a bouncer chassis I like it to look super clean so this is going to be the one piece interior and I'm going to cut that out of a piece of Lexan. I'm going to paint the back side of it. And it's going to look super smooth. When I get it folded up, stuck in the cage, you won't see anything I don't want you to see. And it's going to look super clean. It's going to be super lightweight. And I'll be able to vertically side mount the battery very low. So this will have a really low CG. And uh, it'll still have a forward CG. But... Um, I'm going a little bit more aft CG on this one than I normally do. Uh, we'll see if the motor gets into the rear links. I hope they don't. Um, maybe they won't. We'll see. But uh, I know if I move, if I turn the motor around forward, I would only be able to three link it because uh, on the motor side, which would be the driver's side of the front, the um, upper control arms hit the motor. So. That's another reason I wanted to mount this one backwards. In the um, E1, you can see I just had it three linked and uh, have no Y there. It's just a single link on the side. It made the front a little sloppier, but it really didn't matter much. This one's going to be tight. Everything's insecure, and uh, this is going to be a great rig, I think. We'll see when it's done. Um, I, may, I think I'm going to put a roof panel on this one just because I think it'll look better with a roof panel and that'll be black Lexan as well and I plan to zip tie that to the roof and uh, I'll have the um, what do you call it the little latch on the zip tie on the inside of the cage rather than the outside and uh, it'll look pretty clean when it's done. It's just a little more work. But uh, I'm going to get the shape of the roof now that I have the shape of that. And I'll paint them both at the same time. And then tomorrow I'll be able to actually start putting this stuff together once it's all cut out, folded, and the paint's dry. So these are the little wings that are going to make up the side panels. And it's going to be on the inside of the cage when it's all done here. So I may drop the skid plate out to get it um, secured in without folding it, creasing it, and making uh, fold lines in the plastic that shouldn't be there. But I think this took about an hour to make, believe it or not, taping pieces together and making everything fit and work together. So it's uh, pushing midnight, and I'm going to go to bed. So... Hope y'all are having a good weekend. We'll talk to you later.